Hey, Ronnie here from Four Wheeling in Western Australia. In this video, I'm going to give you 10 tips when it comes to sitting inside your cab while you're off-roading or four wheeling. These 10 tips will assist you in four wheel driving, make things more convenient, easier, and a little bit safer while you're out on the tracks. So let's get into the cab and go through them. Tip number one. The steering wheel. Yes, there is a particular way you gotta hold it. While it's more a particular way you shouldn't hold it, you can hold it like this, like that, whichever way you want, whatever's more convenient, lean on the door, like we all do. There's one thing you shouldn't do, is tuck your thumbs under, like this. Because what happens is, you're driving down the tracks or the trails, it might be a sand track, all of a sudden there's a stump, there's a log, there's a rock, when you hit that log or rock, it's gonna, it can tend to just all of a sudden grab the steering wheel and fling it around. Maybe even just quarter turn, maybe half turn. If it's a full turn, you might be in a bit of, bit of trouble, you wanna hold on to it. But if just that sudden jolt, and you got your thumb tucked in here, well, one, you could break it, you could dislocate it, or if you're lucky, you just sprain it and get a nasty bruise. So don't grip your steering wheel with your thumb around. Just hold it like this. Thumbs tucked to the side of your hands. Number two. This tip, in regards to your footwell, when you're driving off-road and you're on these rocky, bumpy tracks, you'll find that the car will sort of jolt and go up and down in revs. It'll be like a, like a woo, woo, woo. Sorry about the noise. Best way to avoid that, jam your foot up against the side of the footwell and then you can squeeze the accelerator and you can hold it a lot better, a lot easier and you won't get that annoying constant rev change. So you get like a nice smooth drive or smoother drive depending on how good you are at doing it. Number three. When we're driving on the roads, and I wear my flip-flops, or we call them thongs here in Australia, uh, jandals in New Zealand. With your flip-flops or your thongs, I take them off when I drive because otherwise you can't really drive. And I put them right here. Problem is, when you're off-roading and you go down a hill, like a steep hill, they will go in and under your pedals. So let's take a water bottle for example. So it's all right here when you're driving. You shouldn't have it there anyway. I wouldn't have it there either. Um, but when you're going down a hill, that's going to roll forward. It's going to be in the way of your pedals. And you don't want that. So keep that one in mind. Number four. So this tip here is for you ladies and gents that have a winch on your vehicle. You're driving along. All of a sudden, you're a bit stuck. You're on a hill. You're on a bad angle. You can't take your foot off the foot brake because your handbrake is not doing enough or you need to be in the car to be ready to, to drive. You, you don't feel safe leaving your car there by itself. So, you might have a problem here. You need to hand your winch controller or tell the person where to get it from. Now, if it's in the back underneath all the rest of your stuff, forget about it. It's going to be too hard. So, keep yours handy. Mine is behind my seat. There you, go. there you go. And then you can remain in the car while your mate sorts it out. Number five. Rightio, to my favorite tip, the seat organizer. Now this is one of those that normally sits on the back of your seat. However, when I travel solo, which I do for a lot of the trips, this sits, well, this lives on the front seat. Now obviously if the wife's in the car, this will go out of the car or on the back. Even if I have the two kids in the back, this stays in the front. And you can put whatever you want in it. I use it for photography gear, pens, spare sunnies, charger cables, you know, you name it. Great place to hang your radio, maps, you know, wallet, personal items, all kinds of stuff. Torches, driving snacks, especially driving snacks. Can't go wrong with that. So, you know, I highly recommend getting one of these and just set it up for however you need it. Number six. Now 
Down to your sun visors. This might sound a bit weird to cover sun visors. Occasionally, I don't do this very often, but occasionally I'll stick a map with a paper clip onto my visor. In the Jeep, which will be on your screen right now, Brian uses his iPad mini up here and he runs an um, OBD sensor thing for his vehicle and he runs maps as well on, that, on the iPad. So you can just flip it down, have a look, flip it up, keep driving. Uh, another thing with your visors, in case you didn't know, I reckon most of you already do. You've got the sun coming in the side, you can do that. Number seven. So this one is all about your driver's side window or your windows in your car. So, you're driving along, trucks are bumpy, you're getting thrown around. It's um, not that uncommon it has happened to me to whack your head on the window. Now it's probably a bit low for me to do that, a bit higher. I have whacked my head on here before. I've whacked my head here, I've whacked my head here. I whack my head everywhere in this car. It's probably why I'm a bit nuts sometimes. Anyway, so be careful with your window halfway. Also, if your window is all the way down or halfway down, let's just put it all the way down. Say you do in the bad situation, you roll your car. Your natural reaction is to stick your arm out to stop yourself from falling. Now, I saw this recently on a power line track in that nighttime video we did. One of the fellows we met up with, Corey, he was driving up this section, nearly tipped the car over, his arm went straight out. You're lucky he didn't go over because he would have broken his arm. And it's just a natural rea reaction you do, like you're stopping yourself from falling, right? Therefore, I recommend having the window all the way up. Uh, also, another thing, you drive along the tracks, dense bush, I've been whacked in the face many times or whipped in the face by branches and stuff, but I always wear my sunnies when I'm driving. But if, you, if you're one of those people who don't wear sunnies or it's too dark to wear sunnies, just protect your eyes because it won't take much, like a little prickle bush or something, it's going to take your eye out and it's not worth doing that. So, if you have your window all the way up, you're driving along, I'm about to roll over, I can't get my arm out much safer with your window up. That way, instead of having your arm out the window and you're squashed, you end up more like this instead. Number eight. Seatbelts. Yes, I know, boring topic. I'll keep it short and simple. Off-roading. Um, most countries, you have to wear a seatbelt. I understand in the States, you don't have to. In most states there, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, you don't have to wear a seatbelt. However, I do strongly suggest when you go off-roading to wear a seatbelt, it comes in handy. Like, because you're more likely to tip your car or to get on these angles when you're off-road rather than on the road. Um, and when you go down steep sand dunes and stuff, it is quite good to have a seatbelt locked in because you're sort of hanging off it. Like, I love my seatbelt when I go down sand dunes because you just, you, you're kind of like suspended in midair almost. So your seatbelt holds you in, it's really good. It can be a bit of a pain sometimes um, when you're parked on a hill and you take it off, it's hard to get it back on. So I understand there, you're just going to have to drive up sometimes because once the vehicle is on a certain angle, you can't get more play from the seatbelt, it's locked in. So buckle up when you're off road. Number nine. This tip here, not many people think about or don't realize they can do it, but when you're driving at night, to you know, enhance your vision out that window, right in front of you, the most important part, because you've got to see where you're going. You can dim your dash, you can dim your, well take for instance my HEMA, you can dim that as well by pressing a button. Now obviously if you're running a street nav, which you can run off-road in some cases, because some of the tracks are on there, they are usually on automatic, uh, but if they're not, there'll be a certain way to do it. Your dash, now all your lights on your dash can be dimmed as well, In every car should be able to do it, uh, and every car is different how they do it. For example, right now on your screen, you see on the Jeep, it uses a toggle on the light toggle. In my Land Cruiser, you gotta press a few buttons and then hold another button down with the lights on, otherwise you can't do it. So check your manual, work it out, cause it will help you immensely when you're off-roading at night. Number 10.
have your radio in a nice, easy to reach spot. So, boom, here I am on the radio. Two way, right there. So that was my 10 tips from inside the cab while you're four wheeling. Now, if you would like to see another video on 10 things I recommend you bring with you, well, these are 10 things that I have in the car at every trip I go to, then stay tuned for that video. That video will be in the description below and on that link right there when it's ready. You may also notice if you are a frequent viewer or a subscriber of this channel that I'm wearing a different shirt. These are by Sackwear. They got some really cool shirts. They sent us a few more. So thank you very much to Sackwear. Now, if you want some cool cruiser shirts, go check them out. And thank you very much for watching this video. You can subscribe right here, which has been there for a little while. See ya.